In Yu-Gi-Oh, with how many good generic graveyard effects there are, your graveyard can almost be seen as a second hand. Which is why a lot of good cards that send a lot of cards from your deck to the graveyard are banned for good reason. In this list, we'll be looking over some of the best completely generic graveyard effects, which can either activate or proc their effects in the graveyard outside of a trigger of being sent to the graveyard. And at number 10, we have Destiny Hero Malicious. Right off the bat, we have a purely archetype specific card, but the reason it's on this list is because its graveyard effect only requires you to play other copies of itself. As the card allows you to banish itself from the graveyard in order to special summon another copy of it from your deck. So, if you get one Destiny Hero Malicious in the graveyard, you can potentially go plus two in card advantage by getting two other Destiny Hero Malicious in the graveyard, which is why this card has historically always been semi-limited to two copies. You don't have to play any other hero cards in order to gain this amazing benefit. Just any card that's able to get one copy of this card into the graveyard allows you to get two bodies in the field in the future, which can be used for all kinds of plays and combos. Even back in the day before Link Monsters made any bodies on the board more valuable, Malicious has historically been on the semi-limited list due to its potential with Synchro Monsters, and even just as Tribute Fodder back in the Monarch days. Now, technically, Destiny Hero Malicious is a lot better than some of the spots we're about to go over on this list, but since it is kind of an archetype-specific card, and it's always been semi-limited, so you can only use the effect once anyway, we're leaving it at the number 10 spot as the introduction to this list instead. And at number 9, we have Galaxy Cyclone. This is a spell card which has an effect from your hand, where you can destroy any one set spell or trap card in the field. Additionally, it has a graveyard effect that can only be activated during your main phase, except during the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, where you can banish this card from your graveyard to destroy one face-up spell or trap card in the field. And while its graveyard effect has a hard once per turn, the effect of using it from your hand is not. Now, a distinction to notice about Galaxy Cyclone is that it only targets specific states of spells and trap cards. Where from the hand, it can only target a face-down card, and from the graveyard, it can only target a face-up one, which is a distinction that matters because this actually causes the card to see a lot less play than it probably would. Because if all you need to do is destroy a single floodgate your opponent has, but they have no face-down cards to actually use this card from your hand, you're just kind of waiting for some way to send it to the graveyard. Or if your opponent is only playing face-down cards, then Galaxy Cyclone is just a worse mystical space typhoon in your hand, since it's spell speed 1. Although, because this card has the potential to be a plus one in card economy, and for being an excellent card to mill from your deck in order to out floodgates, it has seen competitive play over the years. If its hand effect allowed you to target any spell or trap card instead of just face down ones, I'd imagine you'd probably see a lot more play. But surprisingly, that one little trade off and the fact that it's not a quick effect has kept it from being the best spell and trap card removal card in the game, where people would much rather run Twin Twisters over this card, even though Twin Twisters is card neutral in advantage whereas Galaxy Cyclone is technically a plus one. And at number eight, we have Absolute King Backjack. This card has an effect where if it's sent to the graveyard, you can look at the top three cards of your deck and then rearrange them in any order that you want. Now, this list is not about cards that have effects that activate when they're sent to the graveyard, only cards that have effects that can be activated from the graveyard, which this card also has. Because if it's your opponent's turn, it has a quick effect where you can banish this card from your graveyard to excavate the top card of your deck. And if it's a normal trap card, you get to set it to your field, where you can also use it this turn. But if it's not, then the card is sent to the graveyard instead. So at worst, it allows you to mill one card from your deck with its graveyard effect, but ideally, you're trying to actually get that plus one in order to get a trap card on the field, which its floating effect definitely helps you accomplish. Now, a pure plus one in card advantage from the graveyard by actually getting a resource onto the field is really great. The only reason it's not a little bit higher on this list is because it only works on normal trap cards and it technically has a random chance to whiff. Now, its floating effect definitely allows you to increase the chances that you'll be able to resolve the effect correctly, but there's always a chance you won't have a trap card amongst the top three cards of your deck, or that you're just not running a very trap-heavy deck in the first place where its effect won't really resolve correctly. So it's more of a good graveyard effect in decks that run a decent amount of normal trap cards, which is honestly not a lot of decks. And just like Destiny Hero Malicious, even though it has a great graveyard effect, since it's not completely generic, it's kind of at the bottom of this list, but still on this list because the effect is somewhat generic and also really good. And at number seven, we have Metal Foes Fusion. This is a normal spell card which has an effect that allows you to fusion summon Metal Foes Fusion monsters using materials from your hand or field, but that is completely irrelevant to how the card is normally played outside of Metal Foes decks. Because it also has a completely generic graveyard effect where if this card is in your graveyard, you can simply shuffle this card back into your deck in order to draw one card, with the only restriction that its graveyard effect is a hard once per turn. Now, unlike the previous card in this list, Metal Foes Fusion is a completely generic plus one in card advantage from the graveyard, which is why some decks will even run cards like Foolish Burial Goods to send this card straight from the deck to the graveyard, 
just to draw one card. And no, Metal Foes Fusion does not require any cards from its archetype in order to use its graveyard effect, or even other copies of itself like Destiny Hero Malicious. If you're playing a deck like That Grass Looks Greener and just need a whole bunch of generic graveyard effects that give you immediate advantage, you can't really whiff with Metal Foes Fusion, as it's always going to give you that plus one in card advantage because its condition is to simply return itself back to the deck. And at number six, we have Fossil Warrior Skull Knight. This is a fusion monster which has the graveyard effect where you can simply banish this card from your graveyard in order to destroy one monster on the field. It also has some other effects on the field which are irrelevant for this video, but basically, if you have ways of sending cards from your extra deck to the graveyard, and you don't need to use any floating effects immediately like maybe with Elder Entity Natis, sending Fossil Warrior Skull Knight to the graveyard allows you to have a targeted destruction of a monster whenever you want, just as long as it's here at your turn and as of spell speed 1. There is also another card called Fossil Machine Skull Wagon, which allows you to target and destroy spell and trap cards instead of monsters. And there's also Wind Pegasus and Ignister, which allows you to spin one of your opponent's cards if one of your cards of the field is destroyed while it's in the graveyard by banishing itself. So these three cards all have wonderful graveyard trigger effects that can be used outside of being immediately sent to the graveyard and are generally options to use besides Elder Entity Natis, which is kind of the gold standard of extra deck monsters to send to the graveyards with things like Dogmatica Punishment, since it can immediately destroy any one card in the field. But sometimes you don't need to destroy another card immediately, and sending something like Fossil Warrior Skull Knight in order to have a targeted destruction effect whenever you want is preferred. And at number 5, we have Lost Win. This is a trap card which has the effect where you can target one special summoned monster on the field in order to negate its effect and also cut its original attack in half. And what's unique about Lost Win when compared to other trap cards which negate monster effects in the field, like Breakthrough Skill or Infinite Impermanence, is that Lost Wind's effect is permanent. The monster it targets has its effect and attack cut in half permanently while it's on the field, which is really good and kind of rare for these kinds of effects. And you can do this twice, as it has another effect that while it's in the graveyard, if your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck, you can set this card from your graveyard to your side of the field, but then banish it when it leaves the field. So if you want a set normal trap card in the field that negates monster effects, Lost Wind has the most bang for its buck, as it can be used twice for basically a plus one in card advantage when it returns. There is also another similar card called Titanocider, which can permanently negate the effects of a special summon monster from your opponent's extra deck and changes its attack to zero instead of just cutting it in half. And also, if your opponent special summons a monster from your extra deck, you get to set this card from your graveyard, except during the turn that it was sent to the graveyard, and it doesn't banish itself afterwards. Which means you can continuously use the effect of Titanocider over and over during the course of a duel, just as long as your opponent's special summons from the extra deck on different turns it was sent to the graveyard. However, Titanocider only works on monsters special summoned from the extra deck specifically, which means you can't use it in order to stop other types of special summon monsters like Lost Wind can. And both of its effects are hard once per turn and can't really be used on the same turn. Whereas Lost Wind doesn't have a hard once per turn and can return itself immediately after being sent to the graveyard. So while Titanocider technically has better versatility by changing a monster's attack to zero, and having the availability of coming back infinitely, Lost Winds being able to come back immediately and being usable on more targets does kind of make it better. And I should also mention Breakthrough Skill, which has the ability to negate the effects of one of your opponent's monsters until the end of the turn, and also a graveyard effect to do the same thing but only during your turn by banishing itself from the graveyard. It's also a good negate from the graveyard, but I think Lost Winds is very similar, and I don't think Breakthrough Skill is that much better, or better at all, so I thought I would just mention the spot alongside Titanocider. And at number four, we have Blackwing Zephros the Elite. This card has a graveyard effect where it can special summon itself from your graveyard if you return any face-up card you control to your hand and then take 400 points of damage. Which, funnily enough, that little drawback of taking damage actually allows you to proc the effect of something like Heroic Challenger Thousand Blades, which can special summon itself from your graveyard if you take damage. Now, Blackwing Zephros the Elite has a once per duel on its effect, so you can only ever do this once. But what's so good about this card and why it sees all kinds of plain combo decks is because not only does it give you a free level 4 monster on your side of the field from the graveyard, but returning a card you control to your hand in order to do so is usually the main benefit of the card, and not a drawback like it's supposed to be. As you can use this to return a spell or trap card to your hand and not just a monster. So, if you use it to return something that summons another card, like maybe DDR Different Dimension Reincarnation, you could just use the effect again from your hand in order to special summon another monster. And of course, if you for some reason have a thousand blades in your graveyard, you'd also be able to proc that effect and allow it to come back to the field. So, when it comes to monsters that can bring themselves back from the graveyard, Zephyros the Elite is a really good level and attribute, has an easily activatable effect in order to use it, and doesn't really have detrimental drawbacks for doing so, 
which definitely makes it one of the best cards in this category. And at number 3, we have Destrudo the Lost Dragon's Frizzon. This is a level 7 tuner monster, which has an effect where if this card is in your hand or graveyard, and you control a level 6 or lower monster, you can pay half your life points in order to special summon this card, and then reduce its level by the level level 6 or lower monster you control. And then if this card leaves the field, it's returned to the bottom of your deck instead of going to the graveyard. So Destrudo is one of those rare graveyard effects that can also just be used from your hand if you want, which definitely makes it a lot more usable, since you don't have to get this card into the graveyard first if all you want is its graveyard effect, like with Metal Foes Fusion or Absolute King Backjack. And the effect of just special summoning a tuner monster into the field is super valuable in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Especially with all the combo potential there is with bringing out Christian Halky Fibrax and going into Aurorodon. And even outside of Halky Fibrax combos, Destrudo allows you to easily go into level 7 Synchro Monsters if you want. Of which, you can go into Clearwing Synchro Dragon if you want to be able to negate the effects of a high level monster, FA Don Dragster if you want to be able to negate Spell or Trap cards, or one of the two Black Rose cards if you want to destroy all the cards in the field, or just bounce Special Summon monsters once per turn. Now, the level 7 Synchro Pool is not as good as some of the other levels, but it's not half bad either. Even though the main reason Destrudo was banned was because of its combo potential with Christian Hockey Fibrax, it's currently not banned anymore, and is still just as good as ever. And at number 2, we have Fairy Tail Snow. This is a level 4 monster which can special summon itself from your graveyard as a quick effect by banishing 7 other cards from your hand, field, or graveyard. And also, if this card is summoned, you get to flip one monster opponent controls to face down defense position. And none of its effects are a once per turn, or even once per chain. So, if you tried to use Fairy Tail Snow from your graveyard and your opponent chained something like DD Crow to get rid of it, you can potentially use this effect again in order to dodge the chain order. Although, that would require you to banish 14 cards, which most decks can't really accommodate. And because it has an effect of Book of Moon one of your opponent's cards on its summon, and its summon is quick effect that can be used during your opponent's turn, this card doubles as a form of disruption from the graveyard, as you can bring it out during your opponent's turn in order to flip one of their key combo pieces face down, so they can't use it as material for extract plays. And if you use Fairy Tail Snow in decks like Thunder Dragons, where a lot of their cards allow you to gain advantage when they're banished, Fairy Tail Snow could turn into a 1 card plus 4 in card advantage from your graveyard, which is why the card was originally banned. But no one's really playing Thunder Dragons competitively in the TCG anymore, and that Grass Legs Grainer is still currently banned as well, so it was recently released to 1 copy per deck. Where it probably won't be that big of a deal, since none of the current competitive decks really care about the effect of Fairy Tail Snow, since they're able to do broken stuff without it. But, Fairy Tail Snow is an absolute monster of a card, which definitely has potential to be broken in the future, because it can just bring itself out of the graveyard as many times as you want per turn, just as long as you have the ridiculous amount of materials required in order to do so. And at number 1, we have Glow Up Bulb. This is a level 1 tuner monster which has the effect where if it's in your graveyard, you can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard in order to special summon this card. However, you can only use this effect once per duel, and this is another one of those cards which seems incredibly simple for its effect, but is actually really broken because of a lot of factors working in its favor to make it a combo potential machine. You see, Glow Up Bulb actually came out in 2010, and was made as a way to support Synchro decks, which is pretty obvious since it's a tuner monster. It was actually really good at doing so, because it was a straight plus winning card advantage in the graveyard, and was a really good level for that effect because level 1 tuner monsters are real easy to build around. And in fact, it was so good that when they wanted to lower the power level of Synchro monsters so people would actually use the new XC's monsters, they banned Glow Up Bulb for a while before eventually releasing it from the ban list because it wasn't that much of a problem. Until Christron Halky Fibrax came out, which basically turned any tuner monster that can special summon itself too easily into broken combo potential. Because the combo is, if you get at least one tuner monster in the field and any other monster, then you can go into Christian Hockey Fibrax, and from there, you can end on a board of a whole bunch of negates, because of like a million different combos you can do from just that one starting line. And being able to bring out Christian Hockey Fibrax with the least amount of cards possible is what got a lot of tuner monsters banned, as Glow Bulb could bring out Christian Hockey Fibrax by itself with a single normal summon. The combo was to just normal summon Glow Bulb, then send it to the graveyard with either a Link Summon of Link Karibo or Salomon Great Almirage, and then simply bring Glow Bulb back using its graveyard effect, and then go into Christian Hockey Fibrax. And there are other tuners in the game which can accomplish a similar thing with a single normal summon as well. Deep Sea Diva can just summon another copy of itself from the deck. Plague Spider Zombie can special summon itself from the graveyard by returning a card from your hand on top of your deck. And even Sangan can perform the same feat, as long as you're able to search out Crusadia Arborea. However, these three legal methods of a one card from your hand Christian Hockey Fibrax all require additional setup from your deck, 
or additional hand disadvantage. Whereas Glow Bulb required none of that and could do everything by itself, without having to play any other Garnets in your main deck. Which is why the card is still banned to this day. In addition, not only is it an effortless one card crush on Huggy Fibrax, it's also just a useful graveyard effect outside of that good combo, because of its ability to bring itself out of the graveyard is one of the easiest ones to accomplish. In fact, its graveyard cost is straight up beneficial. If you want to bring out something like Destiny Hero Malicious, you have to play other copies of it in your deck. If you want to bring out Blackwing Zephyros Elite, you have to return a card on the field to your hand. If you want to bring out Inferno Conjurer, you have to have no cards in your hand. Glow -a Bulb is simply a beneficial effect in order to bring itself out, on top of being a tuner monster which allows you to go into synchro plays, or Christian Halgi Vibrax. Basically, everything about Glow Bulb just works in its favor, and the fact that it's only once per duel is kind of laughable on how much of a non-issue that is. Which is why Glow Bulb is the best generic graveyard effect in the game, because not too many monsters have beneficial effects for activating their other beneficial effects. Alright, and that's the list. Are there any other generic graveyard effects that I may have missed, or do you have ideas for future videos similar to this one? If so, I'd love to hear about those things down in the comments.